Greetings everyone and welcome back to Lucas Brews. If you haven't checked out the video where I had a little look at the Italeri and Academy BF109s, this video is going to be very similar except it'll be with the Airfix and the Zvezda one and at the end I'll do a little bit of a discussion about what I think of all four kits and how they compare after my little inbox review. Um, so be sure to check out the last video if you haven't and uh, I will be doing a build video on these kits uh, pretty soon. I've already finished them, I've just got to do the editing for the videos. So uh, stay tuned for that as well. Uh, and I'll leave a little link in the description to both my Patreon if you want to help support my channel. And I'll leave a link to Tectonic Hobbies where you can buy the kits that are featured in this video or ask to have them ordered in if they're not in stock. But um, anyways, without further ado, let's look at these kits. And in terms of tooling age, the Airfix kit comes next. So uh, this tooling was originally designed in 2009, so it's uh, relatively recent. You're only looking at it about 14 years old, so that shouldn't be too bad. Uh, however, this was a um, reissue of this kit with some new decals in 2021, so only two years ago. Um, so starting off with the box art, it looks absolutely beautiful. A uh, very striking and vibrantly painted BF-109 streaking through a formation of B-17s with one of them on fire. Um, I think this is really eye-catching and it's very beautiful, even though it is the... Uh, more 3D renderish, it still has that kind of classic Airfix box art appeal. Hard to beat Airfix box art for sure. Um, so you've got your usual box art and the Airfix titles. You've got the two schemes in this kit, which I uh, personally am the most excited about. They look quite good. Um, so you've got one that was flown by Major Hermann Graf. So he was one of the most famous aces. I think he ended up with about 200 kills, most of it on the Eastern Front, but towards the end he was flying in defense of the Reich, so against the bombers, which is what you see on the front. So uh, that's cool. I really like how Airfix has uh, a little bit of history to these. Uh, and then you've got a very unique looking one, a night fighter scheme, Vata 300. So I believe that's the um, wild pig uh, night fighter squadron. Um, then you've got a little bit of history. Uh, unusually very uh, small for Airfix, usually that takes up a fair chunk, but it just says a bit about the production, the uh, modifications, and about how uh, the Luftwaffe Ace has got a lot of kills. So pretty relevant for the schemes, that's pretty cool. Uh, nothing on the back, the sides are the typical uh, box art, and then on the bottom we've got all of our warnings to not eat anything or, or glue anything to ourselves, but we'll do it anyway. Uh, so this one is one I just picked up from the hobby store as well, so I'll have to open this one up. So we'll start off with the instructions. So here we've got a little bit more detail than the uh, side of the box said about the uh, aircraft's history. So the modification of the uh, G model, what it entails, which is the new engine and some new armament, uh, and a little bit of detail about that. And then you've also got your specifications there, so that's pretty cool. And uh, <sighs> and uh, some specifications just there, so uh, that's all pretty cool. Uh, and this is in the beloved booklet format, so a lot easier to have a little bit of a read of and see what's going on. So Airfix are usually really good with their instructions being super clear. Uh, so we've got some uh, little information for beginners, uh, and then all of the assembly icons, so pretty easy to follow. All you've got is a seat which you glue to the side walls. Uh, no instrument panel, no sidewall cockpit detailing, and the seat that you're gluing is pretty abysmal. Uh, really, it doesn't look at all like a BF-109 seat. Uh, so that's a bit disappointing, especially considering that this is 2009, and uh, Airfix have been making much, much better stuff than this uh, in terms of cockpit detail. Uh, so pretty simple, put a seat in, put a uh, propeller in, uh, it uses the pretty standard system for uh, Airfix propellers, which is a little bit different to the Italeri and the Academy model. Uh, however, it's pretty similar to the Academy that all the propellers are attached to each other on the sprue, which makes life a lot easier. Uh, assembly of the wings, a little bit different here. You've got uh, the front kind of leading edge of the wing is actually moulded uh, as one piece with the top section rather than the bottom section and the top section both matching up like that. It's more like the like that if that makes sense. So the forward section of the landing gear will be part of the uh, top section, which is interesting there. Uh, then you just slap the wings on, elevators go in place. Very basic, the landing gear struts are molded into the uh, door flaps for the landing gear. Uh, and then an optional fuel tank, so we'll have a little look at the details on the actual sprue, but 
this is looking pretty basic. Uh, a one-piece cockpit, so you can't open that up, which is a little bit disappointing, but uh, given how little there is actually on the inside, that's probably for the best, because there wouldn't be anything to see. Uh, and then you just slap some cannons on, optional fuel tanks, uh, the landing gear and all of that, and uh, I believe that's it for this kit. So it's super basic assembly, nothing really uh, too eye-catching in terms of detail. Uh, some very wonderful schemes, very colourful and vibrant with uh, Herman Graf's personal aircraft with that uh, kind of star on the front, so that's very beautiful, definitely will have to do that one. And uh, the other scheme that they include is the Night Fighter scheme, and that is also very eye-catching. Um, I think that's quite pretty, and um, it's something very different uh, with the black, so uh, I think it uses pretty standard um, RLM colours still, but in very different patterns. So uh, you've got two great decal schemes here, uh, and all of the common decals look pretty good as well. So um, we'll have to have a little look at them, but uh, it's by Cartograph, so I had pretty high expectations for the decals. So that's it from the instructions. Let's have a little look at the actual kit. And here we have the actual model kit. So I'll start off with this sprue. Um, so by the looks of things, the uh, surface detail is all sunken. So that's, that's, that's a good thing, I reckon, in this case. Uh, the fabric effect is actually quite well uh, captured there, so that's that's pretty pleasing. Good to see that. Um, I would say that the surface detail looks okay. It's not super accurate. There's not like uh, rivets and all of that, um, but it looks a little bit better than the Ilarian Academy ones in terms of the level of detail, although it's a lot heavier and uh, more sunken. So you've kind of got here the opposite problem to the Academy one where the... Um, the sunken detail is a little bit too strong and exaggerated, but um, that's easier to tone down, I think. Uh, and um, on the inside here, you've just got two little holes to stick the uh, seat in, so pretty disappointing, uh, especially for the age of this kit. Little bit of uh, molded detail on the upper surface for the landing gear, and as you can see, the uh, flaps, uh, the radiator exhaust, and the leading edge of the wing are all molded to the upper surface, so um, nothing really poseable there. Um, and uh, at least all of the plastic and like the uh, injection pin markings are in decent spots. Uh, however, there is a fair bit of flash around the uh, parts that join the actual sprue to the parts. So uh, that'll take a fair bit of cleaning up and carefully removing from the actual frame. Moving on, we've got the small details basically all on one piece. Uh, not that there's really too many to look at. Uh, so the pilot, um, he's probably the most detailed part of this entire kit. Uh, landing gear looks okay, it's, it's pretty sparse and basic. Uh, it definitely uh, is giving me vibes of more like a, maybe an 80s kit, really. Like, um, besides the sunken details, I would honestly expect this to have been a 1980 or very early 90s mould in terms of how little, little the detail is. Um, you've got an optional uh, air intake with the um, sand uh, filter for the tropical version, but I don't think any tropical schemes are included. Uh, and I think you've got rocket pods here. Um, but yeah, again, detail is pretty basic. Uh, moving on, we'll have a little look at the last sprue. Uh, so again, uh, pretty um, exaggerated and deep panel lines. However, at least they're relatively okay. You don't have the option to remove the, um, well, it was kind of off-centered, but the kind of central um, drop tank or bomb rack. Uh, here's your drop tanks, speaking of which, they look okay. Uh, these look like the heads of the rockets. Um, so that's, that's nice that they've included them. Uh, and then the propeller. So flashing, not too bad on this one, but again, same issue of the details being pretty basic uh, and the panel lines being quite exaggerated on uh, the uh, wings and the elevator, but at least the fabric detail is pretty decent. We'll have a little look at these decals. So again, printed by Cartograph, and uh, they're absolutely fantastic. Uh, the level of detail is brilliant. Uh, those vibrant schemes are going to look absolutely awesome, I reckon, with these decals, and you shouldn't have too much of a problem with silvering. Um, so yeah, the level of detail they go to is really good. I can basically read all of this, especially uh, the fine stuff. If I had a micro, um, if I had a microscope, uh, and yeah, it's it looks all pretty accurate and um, 
quite happy with the decals. That's my favorite part of this entire kit. And before I forget, uh, there is also the clear parts. So uh, there is a lot of frames in here, which is a little bit odd. I didn't see in the instructions any options for these. Uh, however, here you go. So by the looks of things, uh, you've got two sets of each canopy. Uh, one of them is for the later model of the G where it was all like a one piece canopy. So that's cool that you've got that extra piece. That's something different to the other kits. Uh, however, as I said, they're all one piece. So that's a bit of a pain. However, uh, given the fact that you've got a couple here, you could always chop one up and if it fails, you've got a spare. However, it's really hard to cut the clear stuff without breaking it. So um, yeah, if you chopped away one and then sanded it down, you might be able to save it. Um, and then use the spare one for the other parts. Uh, it looks like the thickest out of all of the uh, other model kits that we've had a look at so far. Well, I'm gonna be honest, the Airfix kit retails at around about $28 to $30. And I think that's quite wrong. I think that especially for 2009 and especially for Airfix, uh, this is really, I would expect a lot better from them. Uh, the level of detail in the interior is appalling. There's absolutely nothing but a very awfully molded seat. Um, and yeah, I just think in general it doesn't have the um, usual nice pristine finish of an Airfix kit. And uh, I think uh, the uh, One Piece Canopies is also not great. Uh, if you have a look at the Airfix 109E, which I built a fair few of, that that is an excellent little kit. Um, and that's what I would have hoped out of the G model, but unfortunately, uh, they're not the same. Uh, the E model's much better. You've got options to pose the rudder. You can have the canopy open. The detail is much better. The surface detail isn't exaggerated, but it's really quite detailed and crisp. Uh, you've even got the option to have the cowling open and there's a basic kind of molded engine in the interior. Um, and I just think the level of detail is much better. The Airfix kit's probably better for beginners because it's a lot simpler and the assembly's very easy and there's nothing too much to go wrong. Uh, however, overall, I would say it's uh, for the cost of this kit, it's probably not the best. <laughs> we'll move on to the last and the newest BF109 kit. And here we have the latest of the 109s. This is by Zvezda, which uh, technically it's a different variant, the F2, but uh, the main difference is the engine and the armament being slightly different. Um, so nothing too huge, otherwise identical airframe, basically. It was, as I said, molded in 2012, so it's the newest of the bunch, uh, and it is one of the Zvezda's uh, snap fit range, so technically you don't need glue to build it. Uh, personally, I think that's a bad idea. I think you should definitely build it with glue, um, but there's that option. Uh, so you have the uh, usual little kind of Zvezda artwork, uh, this one's just like a nice little brush painted of one in a winter scheme, so that's very different to the ones we've had previously. Um, so quite a nice looking one there, just kind of flying over the uh, eastern front. Uh, so that's all very nice and good. On the back here we have a little picture of what the model looks like, completely assembled with no paint. And as you can see, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, then on the top here we have some details on the artwork for the uh, model kit. Uh, both schemes are from the eastern front, however one's the more standard grey and the other is a winter finish, so that's pretty cool. Then we've just got a repeat of the artwork there, uh, the warnings, and then the colour guide with Zvezda paints and Humbrol paints. So, uh, without further ado, we'll open this one up and have a little look. Okay, so we'll start off with the instructions. So we have a brief little blurb here about the actual model and a little bit of a guide about removing parts from the sprue just for beginners, so that's quite nice that they've included that. And then a little bit of detail for the two different versions of the uh, kit you can assemble. So one version has the aircraft on the ground with no pilot and the landing gear down, and the other has the pilot on board and with the landing gear retracted. Um, so you'll see in these instructions they have the word snap because as I've mentioned, the idea of the uh, Zvezda kits, uh, at least most of them, is you can actually snap them together and not need any glue. But like I said, I'd still recommend using some glue. Uh, an option here for adding the uh, external drop tank part in the center there, the underside of the wing there with the uh, holes for the landing gear. So that's a bit interesting, a different way of assembling that. Uh, and then we'll move on. So another thing that's very different with the Zvezda kit, uh, you actually assemble the cockpit on top of the wings rather than building it as a unit and then slapping it into the uh, fuselage. It's already part of the wing. 
So the rudder pedals and all of that surface detail on the uh, interior of the cockpit floor look much more accurate and much more detailed, which is awesome to see. Uh, you got some parts here like the trim wheels and uh, various controls. I believe that might be for your throttles and all of that and your control stick there. Uh, you've got two different options finally for decals for the instrument panels, which is cool. And you've got a raised detail one, which you can paint by hand if you so wish. Uh, we'll have a little bit of a closer look at those two. Uh, and then that's just the front bulkhead for the cockpit. Uh, here we've got the uh, tub for the uh, seat. So I think that's a bit more accurate the way that seat is actually assembled. And you've got the rear kind of bulkhead here, uh, along with the optional armored plate, which uh, slots in there. Uh, the pilot is also included, which is nice. Uh, the Zvezda pilots tend to have a lot more detail. Sticking the fuselage halves together, which by the way, have some very nice looking raised details on the interior, on the side walls there. Uh, stick these two together, the elevators, the fuselage with the landing gear in the middle and slap that on top of the wings there where the uh, cockpit is. So that'll be a lot easier to paint, I reckon, and uh, weather before you actually assemble the cockpit. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the uh, propeller spinner, which is a bit more similar to the Academy one. In fact, I think it's basically an identical system. Although interestingly on this kit, the um, front part of the cowling is a separate piece that you then snap on to the front there. So that's interesting. Uh, radiators and you've got your exhaust which have a weird kind of hook piece and the idea is they'll clamp together so you don't have to glue it. That's the theory at least. Uh, here we've got the cockpit getting slot in so again it kind of snaps into place uh, which is cool you might be able to open it up uh, for taking stuff in and out if you need to but uh, unfortunately uh, it's all one piece which I'm not a huge fan of if you haven't uh, realized just yet. Landing gear which has a very very kind of thick part that actually roots into the uh, upper side of the wings so that is going to be hard to break so that's pretty good. Uh, it should slot in quite accurately into the right spot which is cool uh, and the detail looks really good. Uh, and then there's of course the option to have the landing gear retracted. Then you have your painting guide here, which I personally think is very confusing. Um, the way that Zvezda have done it is they've got the two separate color schemes here and then the underside of one. Uh, I think it's super confusing because it's uh, hard to tell where the decals go. I believe that some of these are repeated on the other side, but they're not very clear as to which ones are. Um, so that's super confusing and they're basically leaving it up to you to do the decals uh, and put them where you think is best. Uh, which is very tricky for the common stencils, and uh, it's okay for people who are very familiar with the 109, uh, but if you're not, then that can be very confusing, and I'm not a fan of that at all. I would say everything up until now has been very, very good for a beginner. Um, the way the kit assembles is very easy, um, and it's hard to get wrong, really. The way they've designed this kit is pretty good. So let's have a little look at the moulds and uh, see if they're just as good as the instructions suggest they are. So we've got sunken surface detail uh, and a little bit of raised stuff for things such as, uh, you can even see little control cables. Fabric isn't very well molded on the tail here. Uh, I think that's because I've tried to do it on both sides, but it's not awful. Uh, overall, the surface detail looks very good. Um, it's quite fine in some areas, like the little latches for the cowling, which I'm very happy with. Um, the way the cowling is built makes it difficult to modify to have it off, but it is not impossible to do so. If you uh, kind of just cut around the edges, you could have it open. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with all the surface detail there. Landing gear looks great. That looks very accurate. The tread pattern's not too deep, but it's present. Uh, and then there's a few fine parts for things such as radiators and uh, parts for the cockpit. Uh, having a little look at the instrument panel, there's some very nice fine details. There's no kind of raised parts for the um, instrument faces and gauges um, in terms of like the dials. However, you can easily see the outline of the instruments and there's a few little buttons and knobs. So that's very nicely done. And then you've of course got a flat option, which is great with the decals if you're a beginner or not a fan of painting up the cockpit parts like that. Uh, landing gear on the tail is very nicely molded. I can even see the bolts and stuff on the hub. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, seat looks pretty accurate. That kind of tub design and the uh, details on the control stick are very good. Uh, uh, overall, the mold looks pretty clean. There's barely any flashing, which is awesome. And um, it looks like it's gonna be pretty precise to put together. Uh, have a little look at the interior of the cockpit and you've got some nice details there. You've got part of the ribbing, you've got the actual throttle, and you can see the um, balls for the engine controls. 
Then on this side, you can kind of see the fuse boxes and all that part of the oxygen system and a little kind of map holder. So that's looking a lot more accurate and a lot better detail. And of course, you've got to remember there's a few extra parts like this trim wheel, which uh, is a little bit simplified, but overall it's not too bad and some extra controls there. So uh, that looks like the uh, Zvezda has the uh, best detail in terms of the cockpit and uh, the landing gear also looks the best. So having a little look at the second frame, uh, we'll start down here. So we've got the exhausts uh, and the detail doesn't look too bad on them. They're a little simple, but that's okay. Uh, the elevators, which have nicer fabric replicated there and some nice a uh, couple of little rivets there. So that's really nicely detailed. Propeller looks really nice. Again, there's very little flash even on the fine parts. Uh, the pilot looks excellent. I love that they've gone to the detail of actually having his individual fingers and all of that. He's very cleanly molded and you can see he's uh, holding the uh, stick and he's got his other hand on the throttles. It's really clear. Uh, so it's really great. I love the Zvezda pilots. They tend to be really good. Uh, got a few panels there. I think that's the back wall for the cockpit. Looking pretty accurate there. Definitely needs some seat belts, but that's easy enough to do with some Tamiya masking tape. Uh, the underside of the wings here. Um, we got some very nicely done internal detailing for part of the landing gear bay, which is nice. Haven't seen that so far. Uh, and there's even a few rivets done on the underside of the wings there, and that looks all really nice and accurate. Uh, so that's great to see. Uh, and you've got the radiator here, which is relatively simple, but there's still some nice uh, engraved panel details. Uh, the landing gear struts, which all look really accurate. Just got to be careful cutting them off. They'll probably be a little bit tricky. Um, but otherwise, looks pretty good. Not too much to clean up. Uh, we'll have a look at the upper surface and some of the lower surface of the wing. Um, it looks like, unfortunately, they haven't gone into as much detail with the upper surface of the wing in terms of the engravings. Uh, it looks like it's missing a fair bit of detail in terms of some of the panel lines, and there's sadly no riveting, um, which is a shame because the underside looked so nice. But um, oh well, it's still not awful. You've still got some nice little fuel caps there, uh, and it's easy enough, I suppose, to scribe in some fresh panels if you need. Uh, the cockpit details on this part, the floor, they're really good. They're the best of, out of all of these kits by far. You've got really nice rudder pedals. You've got all the controls and the linkages. Uh, you've got the uh, mat on the floor underneath the pilot, and you've got some extra little details there. So that is really nicely done. Uh, and then if we turn the wing over, uh, I don't know why they haven't done this on the upper surface. There's some really nice rivet detail. Uh, so it's a real shame they haven't replicated that on the upper side, but it's um, nice still that it's on the underside. Tiny bit of flash on a few bits here and there, but again, really nothing too much to clean up. And the rest of the landing gear kind of molded detail. Uh, so that's going to have some really nice depth to it, and that's going to look really quite good if you do it up. Uh, moving on, we've got the clear part, which... Uh, it looks like it's probably the thinnest and most clear out of all of the other kits, uh, which is awesome. Uh, it's... Yeah, like I said, looks really good and clear. Uh, it's a bit of a shame that it's a uh, one-piece uh, rather than like a three-piece where you could have it open. Um, but I suppose that's probably to keep it in line with the snap kit kind of style of this kit. Uh, so we'll have a little look at these decals. So the Zvezda decals I've dealt with tend to be really good. Um, they aren't as good as the cartograph, I don't think, in terms of how easy they are to put together, but oh well. Uh, so, you've got the only BF109 to include instrument panel decals, and they look really quite good. Um, I would say the level of detail on these decals is very similar to the cartograph ones, as long as the quality is pretty close, it'll be a good kit. Uh, although it looks a little bit like there's less ones, but that could also just be um, the production of the BF109F. They might not have had as many common stencils and all that. Uh, some very nice though squadron markings and the general markings for the aircraft and it looks like this kit might actually include the parts for the um, the decal or the the symbol I shall not name which is uh, very rare I know some people that's that's a philosophical argument we won't get into whether you should put that symbol on your German planes or not um, however it's there if you're one of those people who think you should for accuracy uh, so that's good um, yeah, some nice markings there, and the decals look really good. So, the jury is still out on which kit is by far the best, seeing as I haven't yet assembled these aircraft, and I think that it's one thing to look at a kit and uh, admire the details and how it all goes together, 
but it's a completely another to have the actual experience of assembling it and seeing what works and what doesn't. So uh, as far as just from a first glance, the Zvezda kit would be overall, I would say the best because of the uh, detail in the cockpit and the landing gear being great. Um, overall, the surface detail being really good and uh, the assembly of it looks really quite easy and also quite precise and accurate. So I would definitely recommend it for beginners. The only issue I can see is uh, the uh, marking guide is very confusing. So if you're new and starting out to models, that, that might be a little bit too difficult. But otherwise, this kit should go together super easy for the beginners. And it's got a fair bit of detail already, but um, it could be modified with relative ease. Uh, and the best part is it's under $20. This kit comes in at usually around about 18 or so. Um, so it's not too expensive at all. Um, and so, yeah, if you're starting out or a bit conscious of money or want a F model, which is a little bit harder to get, uh, then that is probably the best 109 kit. Uh, outside of the Zvezda one, uh, the Italarian Academy kits are definitely super close. Uh, personally, I think the Italarian one takes the vote for me because I think it's just a little bit more refined. Uh, the cowlings coming separate gives you some more options to modify it and add engine details and all that. Uh, but otherwise, the details are pretty similar. Um, the landing gear is better molded, I think, on the Italarian one, even though there's a few little weird parts. I personally think it looks more accurate than the uh, really, really heavy uh, tire tread pattern on the Academy kit. <laughs> um, and you've also got some more options for um, 109 schemes, some more variety. Uh, so that's also always good to have. Um, otherwise, the way these planes are assembled is pretty much the same. The price tag is pretty much the same. Um, the only major difference would be the Italeri's propeller and just a couple of small things here and there. So personally, I prefer the Italeri because it's got some more decal schemes and more accurate landing gear. However, I'd still consider the Academy very close and I love a lot of things about these kits like the uh, three-piece canopies. Uh, the large variety of schemes for the uh, scale. Usually you only get two with like the FX and the Zvezda, but these ones have uh, four and three schemes respectively. So that's personally my uh, two picks um, out of them. And uh, as for the Airfix one, as I mentioned before, uh, compared to these kits, uh, it really does not stack up, I don't think. Uh, outside of the uh, really beautiful, vibrant color schemes, um, it's just not as good. It costs almost twice as much as the Zvezda kit, yet has no real detailing on the uh, interior or the landing gear. Uh, the raised detail or the, the, the sunken detail is not as good in my opinion in this kit as it is with the others. Uh, so overall it's lacking in detail. For beginners it might be a little bit better as the instructions, as with always with Airfix, are super clear and uh, it's relatively simple. There's not much that can go wrong. Um, especially on the interior where there's basically nothing. So if you're new, this kit might be good to start out with. Uh, however, it's expensive. So if you're on a budget, it's not gonna be as good, I reckon. Um, and uh, the decal's really nice. It's uh, such a shame that it's not a little bit of a better quality. I'd expect more from Airfix, uh, especially for recent kits. With the re-releases and the vintage classics, I'm willi willing to give them a little bit of slack because um, that's different. That's uh, re-releasing old tools and that's aimed at a little bit of a different market I think but uh, issuing this one in 2023 or 2021 not as good as the other 109s and I think they should definitely update their tooling because um, their 109e is of a much much better standard and it's a very good kit uh, and just sadly the G model from Airfix is not. That concludes our little look at these four 172nd scale BF 109s I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you agree with me or if you have any questions, comments or other suggestions, leave them down in the comments section below. Um, so obviously I built all four of these aircraft and my opinion swayed a tiny bit in some respects for the Italeri one being a little bit less uh, well fitting than the Academy Airfix and Zvezda kit. Uh, however, overall my opinion is still pretty much the same, but um, be sure to stay tuned for my build videos on all four of these 109s. And uh, I've also looked at some other ones since, and there'll be some more videos, obviously, um, and uh, other Messerschmitt shenanigans to ensue. But uh, thank you very much for watching and supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. It's um, awesome to know there's people out there interested in this stuff, 
and um, the hobby as a whole is still very much well and alive, and I like to uh, be a part of it. Until the next video, model on.